What's up everybody welcome back to another video within the generative AI series and in this video we'll be talking about embeddings. So till now we have covered quite a lot of ground in terms of you know uh, creating assistants, creating text-to-text -text assistants, voice-to-voice -voice assistants, also enhancing the capabilities of our assistants through function calling and whatnot. So if you haven't seen those previous videos, I really recommend that you do. I'm going to hook up the link uh, within the cards above. So if you have time, please go check them out. Great. Uh, let's talk about embeddings. And I really wanted to sort of talk about it before jumping into actual code, before writing APIs to sort of, uh, you know, generate our endpoints in some way or manner. Uh, before doing that, uh, it's kind of crucial to understand that why embeddings hold such a significance within the uh, space of NLP, uh, natural language processing and machine learning itself. Machine and deep learning both. So uh, the best way would be to sort of describe it through an example. Uh, so let's say I have a string called hello world. Now, I know the semantics of this particular sentence uh, because we have learned those semantics over time uh, through language and through learning, through speaking. But computers, they only understand zero and ones. So how do we make computers understand the context of what hello world represent? So in order to do that, we have to find a way through which we can sort of numerically represent it. So let's say uh, we represent this string through a series of an array. Let's say I give one just because we have hello in it. And I give another one because we have world in it. Now, uh, if I give you another string, which just says hello, how do we represent it into a form of an array? So let's say uh, we can do something like this. Since it has hello, I'll give it a one, but it doesn't have world, I give it a zero. Now to make sense of it, we have to represent it mathematically into a plane. The best way to do that would be in XY plane. And the reason why I'm choosing XY plane is because uh, we have two tokens over here. So when I say tokens, I sort of can incline you to a new terminology dimension. So this particular sentence has two dimensions. It's it has hello and it has world. And this particular token has one dimension. And since our xy plane has two dimensions, one being y and the other being x, we can sort of represent our uh, strings in this plane. Obviously, we have origin being zero over here. So uh, to sort of represent this, uh, one, one, uh, so this goes here, and then we have hello, which goes here. Now, uh, have you ever seen Gmail writing or completing your sentences while writing, you know, emails? So have you ever wondered how it does that? Or even when we use GPTs or uh, OpenAI, uh, how do these models, uh, OpenAI models, actually know the context? Uh, like in which context do they need to answer? Obviously, there has to be some calculation going on behind it. And there are like uh, tons of data processing required for that and machine learning methodologies required for that. But uh, just uh, if we consider the uh, scenario of text completion, because we're going to take this scenario and move on uh, with it as an example for our next videos as well. So let's say uh, we want to find, uh, if I type in hello, then my program or the system itself or a particular model should return hello world or, you know, uh, just world ahead of my hello. So how can I do that? How can I achieve that sort of a functionality? That's the question. Right. So if you if you look closely, uh, so within the X, Y plane, uh, I can sort of represent these as vectors. Just like that. Let me give them a 
and over here and over here perfect so I can say that mathematically I can represent my sentences in an XY plane but uh, the question is when um, in normal conversations our sentences can be huge or the tokens within those sentences can be huge so yes uh, Similarly, uh, we can represent if a sentence has like n tokens, then we can represent it in in an uh, like an n dimensional plane. Obviously, we cannot visualize it. Uh, we can only visualize two uh, D planes or three D planes because that's what we have been taught uh, through our you know schooling and within the college. Uh, but it's obviously, hard to. Uh, visualize or think about dimensions more than three uh, but mathematically it's possible and if we can represent two tokens or two dimensions within the plane then we can definitely represent n dimensions within the plane as well so this is the concept around uh, embeddings that you actually represent them as vectors and this is exactly the significance around it so the term goes vector embeddings now, uh, the technology around it, obviously, uh, it inspires you to not just use it for text. You can also use it for videos. You can use it for audios. You can use it for documentation. And this is exactly a part of uh, a functionality that these models have been built upon. So if you're talking to a model, it's pretty uh, easy uh, to sort of guess the fact that, you know, behind the scenes embeddings play a huge role because that's how they sort of get your, uh, you know, textual representation or your visual representation. And also uh, when you actually assign numbers to it, uh, then it's easy to sort of add some sort of math to it as well. And that's where machine learning comes in. So the vector embeddings, uh, if you heard the term anywhere, over the internet, within your class, within your office, it represents, a, in, in, in a very uh, simply explained way, it, it's just a representation for your computers to understand. And since they only understand numerics, and so that's why uh, the representation actually holds it that way. So instead of visualizing this as an array, you should visualize these as vectors within, uh, you know, some n plane. So I hope this makes sense, and we can continue with our, uh, you know, uh, videos from here onwards, since we have the foundation now. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you like it, please hit the like button, and if you want to learn more about generative AI, and you know. Uh, different other aspects around artificial intelligence, please subscribe.